so easy on.
everyone and welcome to the Armageddon series. Now, if classical chess is the Mozart of the game, then Armageddon is your motorhead. It's fast, it's furious, and it's in your face. I'm Grandmaster Simon Williams, and I'm here from the Berlin studios, and I'm reporting with the lovely Yvanka Huska. Wonderful to be here, Simon. And uh, first of all, I'd like to give a very warm welcome to those of you who are following live on television. And for those of us, those of you who are following live on YouTube, I would love to just ask you to subscribe, like the channel, and uh, follow World Chess. And of course, share this video with your friends or with anyone who likes chess, because we have been in for a ride these past two days. And yesterday was a real roller coaster. It certainly was. We had everything we wanted yesterday. And we had, uh, well, we can see the players there from that, uh, that day. We had Wesley So and Renito Terry go through. But really, the uh, amazing game was this game between Andrew Tang and um, obviously uh, his opponent, Dominguez. And that, we're gonna see highlights of it very soon. It was so exciting, wasn't it, Yvanka? I mean, it's, here we go, look the at this. closing moments of the Armageddon game, you know, hands are flying, pieces are just chaotically placed across the board, and wow, this is unbelievable stuff. It is, and that is just so exciting to see. Uh, I mean, obviously, who knows what's going on at the end there, but we want excitement and we've got it. Yes. Let's now have a look at the bracket, shall we? Yeah, let's have a look at uh, how it all goes up because, uh, oh, here it is, the brackets. And you can see we have a, a, a couple of people here already through. We're looking at the lower section today and we're gonna be concentrating on that part. So uh, this is the Armageddon Championship Series 2023. It certainly is. It is the ultimate chess showdown of the year. Four qualifying events, America's Asia and Oceana, women's event, Europe and Africa, and two players from each continent have qualified online, while six of the strongest players from each continent get invitations. The finest minds in the game will compete fiercely for a chance to enter the grand final and win the Armageddon Championships title. All events are broadcast live from Berlin's World Chess Club on Unter den Linden. And we are kicking off with the America series. During this week, these top players from the American continents are going to show us how it's done and just take a look at that lineup. It is unbelievable. And uh, talking about unbelievable things, we also have an unbelievable place to play chess. The FIDE Online Arena hosts rated tournaments and games 24 hours per day. Join the arena, you'll get a FIDE ID, a profile on FIDE.com, and access to pro chess community as well as access to prize money tournaments. So play official games at chessarena.com. And just before the game start, we'll have one final look at the bracket, just so you guys at home know where people stand and where people are and who's in and who's out. So today we're concentrating on the lower bracket. So the very exciting thing about this is that we're gonna have people go home. I suppose that's exciting, it's a bit cruel as well, but the losers of these matches are out of the competition. So there's a lot of pressure in, uh, in the games today, isn't there? You think it her? certainly is, it is survive or die time. And uh, the players do play two blitz games against each other. And in case they're tied, they go on to an Armageddon game. White will have five minutes on the clock, black will have four minutes on the clock, but white will need to win in order to go through to the next stage. It is cruel, but it is entertaining. So it's day three, and you can see the pair-ups here. We have Sam Shankling versus Eric Hansen, and Ray Robson versus Lanier Dominguez. So this is stage two of our double elimination format. All the chips are in the middle. And uh, well, I think we should have a look a bit deeper at uh, these uh, pair-ups. Yeah, and our first match of the day is between Sam Shankland and Eric Hansen. You have to remember, Eric Hansen lost a very hectic Armageddon game to Renate Terry, whilst Wesley so got the better of Sam Shankland during day one. And they're both from the same generation, and they fight to the bitter end, four decisive games between them. 
and we can have a deeper look just at these individual players. Let's start with Sam Shanklin. He's only 31 years old. He became a grandmaster at the tender age of 20. His blitz rating is 26.38, and he has been part of the Olympic gold winning US of A team. But maybe most interesting, Sam has been on a reality TV show, Survivor, and he has to survive against Eric today. Yeah, he will need to use all his skills because he is up against Eric Hansen, a man that really does need no introduction. He's a pioneer chess streamer and uh, he likes trance music and also a big fan of hyper bullet games. But don't be fooled, he is a top rated grandmaster from Canada. He's played for his country many, many times. He's got a lot of experience and he also has a big nickname, Big Chief. Big Chief, that's right. Eric is known as Big Chief. We can see the countdown now to the game. So it's going to start very, very shortly. It's going to be exciting. Um, and Eric has the black pieces in this game. Slight advantage to Sam. Get your bets in now. Who are you rooting for? Are you rooting for the survivor or the Big Chief there? And we will now go over to the players and see if we can see any tension in their, in their faces there. Oh, they look like they're in full focus mode. You know, they're, and you can just feel the anticipation in the air. The lights are blue. The players are just getting ready to just play chess in this wonderful atmosphere. The colors are changing 13 seconds until the start of play. Sam, of course, is very well prepared. Eric has a very fixed repertoire and he plays um, exactly the same nearly all the time. You know, he strongly believes in his opening. They're off. Handshake off. And uh, wow, what are we going to see? The first move is opening with the king's or the queen's pawn. Um, yeah. And I'm expecting uh, either a Bogo Indian or a Queen's Indian from Eric Hansen. And wow, you know, Sam Shankland, he's so well prepared. He's actually produced some courses and he's practicing what he preaches. Yeah, so we will get a close up of the wooden board soon. I will let you know, though, that it is a Queen's Indian uh, opening and uh, not much has transpired so far. One thing I've actually noted here, which is quite surprising, is how Sam has moved his knights. He's moved his knights, so they're backwards. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, 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 if someone did that to me, I'd be a, a little bit offended. Why have you turned the knights around so they're not facing me? Um, okay, but the position here, it looks fairly standard at this moment in time. Not too much to report. Eric has played a bit of a sideline, probably trying to get Sam out of his great preparation. But they've both got one pawn in the middle of the board each. You can see in front of their queens there and uh, they're looking quite calm at this moment in time. I'm sure that will change very quickly. We've seen from previous matches that they start like a smooth river, but it quickly goes to a rapid waterfall. And both players just making normal developing moves. Possibly a slight advantage to Sam in this position, you Yeah, remember? definitely. And it, it also, just taking a look at the clock times, it doesn't look like Sam is in any way surprised. And also, check out the heart rate there. Sam with a very steady 91. You have to remember, anything over 100 means that you are under some stress. And if it goes above 120, well, it does mean that you are feeling the heat. And one thing when it comes to resting heart rates is that the lower it is, it actually is an indicator of fitness. And Sam has kind of said that he's very fit. He works out regularly, he does wait, and whoa, we already have some explosion in the middle of the board because Sam has gone forward in the middle and challenged those black pawns. That's right, so you can see Sam has a little bit more space, two white pawns in the middle, but Eric has this kind of triangle set up, which is very hard to break down. The strategy really, I think, in these games, if you've got the black pieces, as Eric does here, is that a draw is quite a good result because you can then have the advantage of the white pieces. They're both developing very sensibly. With Eric's last move, he's putting indirect pressure on the center. The knight that that bishop is now attacking is defending the center and Eric wants to exchange that knight off so he can win a pawn in the middle of the board. Hence why Sam has just moved forwards attacking that knight, Ivanka. Yeah, and uh, I do feel that this position is really gonna hinge on whether Sam can actually make effective use 
of uh, the dark squares. If he can control the advance of this uh, c6 pawn, stop that coming forward, then he will have a good advantage. We can see the evaluation bar there. Keep an eye on the side. If it's a little bit higher on the white side, it means the computer very much likes white's position. And you can see already here that white has a very nice position and, and white has just played Yuvanka's idea, stopping Eric from being able to move a pawn forwards. So Eric's got to try to come in to those weakened squares. Sam's coming back to stop those maneuvers and get ready to exchange. But generally, this is a very nice pawn structure for Sam. Um, and he must have a, a still a bit of a nagging advantage here. Yeah, I feel that this is a very pleasant position for Sam. And uh, Sam is like a straight talking, straightforward guy. And he will like this type of position where he has just a very simple plan, which is attack the backward pawn. And once he piles on the pressure on that poor little piece, then he will just go about just expanding on both sides of the board. And the knight does jump into the c4 square. It promptly gets exchanged off. And remember, Sam has to maintain control here. He cannot let Eric disrupt the balance of his position. And uh, Sam putting his knight on the edge of the board, Eric has to break out now. He I think has it, yeah, to destabilize, and there it goes. This is a very standard idea. That pawn was a little soul guy on his own. He wasn't looking too happy. And Eric's trying to create some kind of counterplay on the queen side now by threatening to win a pawn by simply pawn takes pawn. Will Sam be able to keep control? I think this has improved somewhat for Eric now. Eric has been able to create some counterplay. If he plays just pawn takes pawn here, he will open up the rook. But he's got another idea in mind. Where's he gonna move that rook? But keep an eye on the clocks. As we say, they start slow, but they really increase the speed around now. Otherwise, they lose. Yeah. If they go down to zero, they lose the game. Yeah, and Eric, he is burning time on the clock. He is actually under 40 seconds. The players do get an extra two seconds per move, so it's not quite critical yet, but they, the pieces will have to start flying at some point. It looks like Sam has managed to maintain um, any sort of pressure on the queen side there. And it often comes down in chess also to who has more space. At the moment, Sam has more space because of his advanced white pawn. That might mean later on he can attack the black king just by pushing those pawns. On the other hand, Eric is coming in with his pieces on Ooh. the queen side. But he looks a bit, he looks a bit shaky today, does Eric? Did, did you just see that I hand did. check there? He nearly <laughs> blundered. <laughs> he nearly moved his queen to a square where it got forked. I don't know if Eric is feeling that confident here, Yvanka. Yeah. Look at what, 19 seconds 19 already. seconds, and uh, Sam initiating some trades just to get control of the A-line. This is good stuff, very nice. And, and here, uh, comes here comes that idea. Yeah, the F-pawn is marching forward. Perhaps it's gonna go one square deeper. Oh, this is uh, getting critical. And it's not great, actually, for Eric that he doesn't have too much time on the clock to navigate these complications. If we have a look at the wooden board now, we can see um, the clock times as well. Look at, just keep an eye on Eric's clock. Now, it's important to mention they're getting two seconds added on every move. At the moment, that changes in Armageddon, but uh, it, it really feels to me that uh, Eric will do well to get a result in this game, just because he has less space, less time, and he's, he's sort of been a bit shaky with some of his moves. He nearly did a big mistake earlier, and at this level, one mistake is enough to lose the game. We see this little pawn running up the board. Sam is starting his kingside attack. Eric stops that pawn from coming any further forwards. But Sam now puts his bishop right into the middle of the board. It's not disastrous for Eric, but Sam in charge at the moment. Yeah, he is in charge. A nifty little bishop manoeuvre there. The bishop can now dance on both sides of the board. And Eric slowly unravelling his pieces. He does need to find a source of counterplay. And he's going to start attacking that uh, weak b4 pawn that White has. And another advantage Sam has, we've talked about the rooks during the show. If you can get your rook to an open line, you're doing okay. A little bit of nervous sort of uh, jitters there, I feel, from Sam. Uh, is he going to tank a lot of time now? It looks like he is. He's under 30 seconds as well. Um, I don't know, but I would probably guess that Eric is the better, uh, very better player when their times get really, really short. More exchanges coming on the board and 
I, I suppose that's good news for Eric because the more exchanges that happen, the closer to a draw. But uh, Sam is also a pawn up here, Ivanka. Yeah, he is a pawn up. But uh, Eric it's now... My mistake. No, is it? No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's not a pawn up, but instead the big set of trades. And now Eric is just simply trying to hold the position with nine seconds left on the clock. And does he trade off five square bishops? I think Big things have definitely improved for decision. Eric though. I, I, I would like, you know, just have to mention that because before um, Eric's king was looking quite exposed to an attack, but the more pieces that are being exchanged off, the little bit easier it is. But I say that White has his pawns advancing forwards, like, like you know, like space invaders there, just Ooh, coming up the boards. Sam has to take care though because he does have some weak pawns, and uh, I think Eric does know exactly what he needs to do. He needs to control all those entry points. He's located his bishop to a great square, and five now seconds. he just has to keep his Four. nerve. Five seconds, I mean, he gets so, so low on time, but it looks very blocked, doesn't it? I mean, this yeah. is the one thing that Eric can rely on, but this is a very, Ooh. very dangerous move from Sam. Sam has changed the pawn structure. It but was, it was he, looking like a draw before, but now but he's got, oh, I don't know, he's got a very past, very he's dangerous He's an outside pawns. past pawn. This is sharpening up. This is not what you want when you have three seconds left on the clock. Eric in a lot of trouble now. Look how close that pawn is to queening. It's one square away from queening. Let's take it and, and there's a handshake. Been... Eric has won. Sorry, Eric has lost. Eric did lose and Sam takes the first game there. I mean, it looked like it was going all right. It looked like Eric was holding, but he did show more nerves during that game and Sam takes the lead there with that win. But very exciting stuff, Ivanka. Gosh, I mean, it just goes to show it's all about the clock handling. You've got to contain your nerves. You've got to uh, retain your composure. I mean, unbelievable end game. That's right. We can have a look at some of the highlights here. And this is where Sam first started moving in the center. And actually his winning strategy throughout the game was pushing his pawns slowly but safely up the board to harass uh, Eric there. And that was uh, something that in the ending gave him a big advantage. Uh, another moment here, Yvanka. Oh, we saw the, the hand check there where Eric actually almost blundered away material, putting his queen on the wrong spot. But uh, he caught himself just in time. That's right, and uh, you know, uh, Eric now, he must bounce back if he's gonna stay in this competition. He needs to win with the white pieces, and then we get Armageddon. And this was the final moments of the game where Sam did this quite risky idea, but it really paid off because now a beautiful maneuver, and he saw that he won the pawn on the side of the board there, which won the game. Yeah, nice technique from Sam Shankland. And here are the closing moments when the G-pawn is just going to steam roller through to its destination. And Eric resigns as he's going to lose his bishop. Yeah, tense stuff. Um, uh, it looked just like that game. It was a little bit tough for Eric the whole way, but he's got a chance now to bounce back. The countdown has started for the next game in 50 seconds. Eric gets the white pieces and he's just got to go full steam ahead and try to get revenge to take it into Armageddon. Will he, will he get his revenge, Ivanka? Well, he has to take inspiration from what happened in his match against Renate Terry there. Eric started with a win, but then Renate Terry came back. You know, so, you know, if he draws on those emotions, I think he can do it. Eric is a very strong player. He has the white pieces. Anything can happen. It can, 20 seconds before the game kicks off in our beautiful studio there. And um, well, Eric, now he, at least he knows it's all in. It's an all in situation. He's got to win. If he doesn't win, he's going home. Well, probably not home. He might spend a bit of time in Berlin, I feel. <laughs> but um, he's out of this competition at least. And they're off. Yeah. The chips are down for Eric and he opens with his trademark king's pawn and there we see a sicilian from sam sam is really you know playing in a confrontational style he's not afraid 
The Sicilian is a very risky opening from Sam. This is what we see at the start of the game. There's about 1,700 different types of opening, but the reason I say it's a risky strategy from Sam is it's known to bring on lots of tactics, lots of attacking. And look at this, Eric has castled on the left-hand side. You rarely see that, uh, which I think we're going to get a very exciting game, at least here, Ivanka. Yeah, take a look at that. We see some trades there on the board, and Eric just like uh, forming that skeleton for an attack. And the big question for Sam is where is he gonna put his king? Is he gonna castle to where the attack is brewing or is he just gonna just live with the king in the center? Big decision time. That's right, and the reason this is a risky opening is you can see both kings are very likely to go to opposite sides of the board, so they're as far away from each other as possible. And that means you can throw everything, the kitchen sink, the pawns, the pieces, at your enemy's king, and it normally comes down to just who gets their attacking first. Sam pushed that pawn towards White's king, but on the other side of the board, White has pushed his pawn up the board, getting ready to attack the Black King. Uh, this is still a known position, I believe, it's a uh, theory. Uh, my slight concern for Eric is that Sam's preparation is often exceptional. It is exceptional. And just take a look at the clock times. You know, he <laughs> barely used any time. And this is worrying. And also take a look at the heart rates. Sam's heart rate is like steadily decreasing down to 99. And now, you know, he's just like completely chill. Meanwhile, Eric's has been kind of hovering around the 110 mark, which means he is feeling the pressure. That's right, and we now see this castle, so we're getting into a situation where they have their kings on the opposite sides. Will Eric be able to push those two pawns towards Black's king and open up the Black king? That's the strategy you use, because well, the reason you move your king and do this idea called castling is you get your bodyguards, your pawns, in front of your king to guard your king, have a little barrier there. And what White wants to do is break that barrier down with his pawn. So he's just got to, he's got to really just throw them towards Sam. He's thinking here of the best way to do that. I guess he's got to move the bishop maybe, Ivanka, yeah. out of the way. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. Another idea is actually just to advance the H pawn, try to crack open a line as quickly as possible. It's a really tough position because after all, black, just take a look at those three pawns in front of the king. They are in the perfect defensive formation and your plan has been played, Simon. The bishop takes a step back and that G pawn is gonna start advancing. Well, the world champion Magnus Carlsen, I've seen him play this exact idea with the white pieces in some online events and uh, he's won some beautiful games. So Sam has to play this move. When you're attacking, every tempo counts. This is why it's so tactical. You can't just maneuver around, play very slowly because you'll get checkmated. So Sam here is pushing his pawns towards White's king. Now that pawn can be captured by the white queen, but that would be very risky opening up the line towards that king. So Eric's just moved his knight around and now another piece comes over and Sam has a threat of the queen coming in to check the white king. So Eric defends that weak point, that pawn by the white king. And what Eric is hoping, I think, is now to get his turn to attack. Sam keeps pushing his pawns. This is getting very, very exciting. It's a very spicy position. And uh, those pawns are marching on both sides of the board. And uh, there's a knight on the edge of the board, the black knight acting as a big blockader. And Sam, he don't care. He is determined to push that pawn all the way to A3 and get control of the dark squares. But will his black knight hold off White's attacking forces? Well, I mean, who's going to get the first attack in? What's just happened on the right-hand side of the board has really helped Eric. Eric has opened up the Black King, and often it's the first side to open up the King which gets the best chances. The Black King, it has now this air in front of it, and you might be able to land a bullet through that little gap there at some point. But it's going to be Sam's chance next to attack. And look at the clock times. The clock times, Sam has double the amount of time. The heart rates are nearly even here as well. They're both actually pretty relaxed considering the situation on the board. But it's a big moment for Sam. How's he gonna, is he gonna defend or is he just gonna attack here? I'm sure he'd prefer to attack if he could, Jovanka. I think he has to start throwing those pawns forward. Maybe if he wants to play a defensive move, I think maybe he has the time to relocate that dark square bishop 
But no, he is going straight for the jugular, but Eric's knight is going to hop into the game. Well, it's very exciting now. Look at this. Sam makes the first blow. His rook comes right down towards White's king, and this is a sacrifice. A brilliant move there, actually, from Sam. I think Eric missed this one. He's taken his time. He's got 35 seconds. The reason this is a brilliant move is that pawns do not matter. White can now take that rook, but you open up more lines towards your king. You've got to keep your king protected. Okay, instead, the queen comes forwards, but okay, Sam's lining up with the pieces. The knight comes in. Who's going to get to the king first here, Ivanka? Oh, it's so wild. It's impossible to say. Um, taking a look at the evaluation bar, it's telling us that white is that tiny bit better. There is actually no way through for the black piece pieces to infiltrate, but Eric's clock is situation critical. 20 seconds and counting down. And a brilliant move again from Sam in a very tricky situation. He's gone for exchange of queens, and exchange of queens should help him because he's got these rooks on the open file. Any result possible, but the time is not with Eric. 14 seconds. They're both in the zone at the moment, though. That white knight did do a great maneuver taking a pawn near Black's king. But at the moment, it feels like the initiative, initiative is with Sam. Yeah, and uh, we have to remember, Eric is teetering on the brink. If he loses, if he draws, that is it. He is out of the competition. So he is in a must-win situation. He has to throw his pieces forward. He has to gain every single advantage possible. Sam now dropping a little bit on the clock. He's having some doubts here. Uh, 37 seconds. This is where panic can set in, especially when you know you only need to get a result to go through and win the stage. He pushes a pawn in the center, and Eric comes in with his knight, giving a check. The knight has to be captured, and look at that open line now towards Black's king. If Eric can get a rook on the open line, he will attack the Black king, and that will be very difficult for Sam. So is Sam going to run with the king? Eric's fighting back very well here. The king tucks itself in the corner. The rook now gets that king on the open line. He just needs to get his bishop in. Ooh, yeah. uh, this move looked forced to me. He's got to give his king a bit of air. Definitely. And the queen now dives in. Is it, it looks like Eric's doing the damage here, but he's got four seconds left against Sam's 15. The queen comes in, the bishop blocks, and it's nearly checkmate everywhere. Another piece comes in. Can Eric come in? He comes back with the queen, defending solidly here. Defending solidly, but you know, there are pawns up for grab, and Sam actually takes the pawn on f3. And both sides are actually very nervously defending every single point possible. It looks again, any result, it's just, it's just a nail biter. He's gone for a sacrifice, Sam. Does this work? This could be the killer blow. Now the queen is coming in. It is the end of the game because Black will be giving checkmate in that final position. Sam has gone through. Bad news for fans of the big chief. Yeah, whoo. What a game. I, I mean, yeah, well, fair play to, uh, to Eric. You know, he really went for Sam there. You know, he played aggressively. He really put the pressure on Sam. But Sam, what can we say? He just handled that resourcefully and magnificently. He did, uh, and it was very brave play from Sam as well because the opening choice, we saw what a dynamic and tactical game it led to. And the reason why this was so risky is because Sam only needed a draw to go through, but he went for the win. And they often say the best way to draw is to try and win. If you try to play too passively, things go wrong. Bad news for Eric fans there. Um, he's gonna be probably enjoying a bit of Berlin, I guess. So, uh, you know, you better be careful, Berlin. Eric is coming for you. Uh, but great news for fans of Sam. Uh, Sam's had a played extremely well in that match. Yeah, you could actually see the relief in his face when he won that second game. You know, he wants to be here, he wants to be playing. This means a lot to him. Definitely. And here's some highlights. And this is the first kind of highlight where they're both going towards their opponent's king. And this move from Sam was a key idea because he opens up the rooks to get nearer to the white king. Eric tries to keep it very contained. And that move, what a beautiful move that was, Shivanka there. Yeah, it was such a classy move. And uh, what an aggressive game. I mean, both sides, fireworks, 
wild position, chaos. It's what we want from a match like this. Anything can happen. And here we see when the players are just down to their final seconds, it's just about who can hold their nerve. And Sam just keeps finding those good moves. Yeah, I mean, it really could have gone either way, but Sam's, if you just look at his rooks, they're a bit nearer to White's king. And when he gets his queen back into the game, look at the black queen. The black queen sneaks its way back in. And I think after the next move, it's the end of the game. There's nothing White can do. And this was a fantastic tactic here that came up. An absolutely stunning finish. Uh, and the point of this is the black queen comes in and it will be checkmate next move there. So, yeah, uh, very, very interesting. I mean, uh, I do feel for Eric, but Sam, well done. And that means Sam is still in the competition. Eric's out of the competition at the moment. But uh, the way he played was just superb there. The yeah. way that Sam won both those games. Yeah. Very, very confident. Very, very confident, very smooth. Even though they went through a hair-raising journey, it did feel like Sam was in control, finding some really good resources. He looks like he's on form. Yeah, so certainly in that one, I mean, he played some lovely ideas. And I, I like the way he played so aggressively because you don't always see Sam go for his opponent's king. But he, he decided there against quite a tactical player he was going to go for it. And I, I think we are going to be having an interview uh, with Eric now. Um, so let's, let's see if we can get that interview up. match against Sam Shankland, which unfortunately means you're out of the Samargadan Championship Series. Uh, can you share your thoughts on, on today's match? Yeah, just the same as usual, I guess, uh, down to 10 seconds in both games to a minute and um, kind of relieved I lost because I I'd had this issue for a long time and don't really uh, think I should be playing tournaments while I have this like massive time trouble addiction. Like, it's just been uh, really frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I thought if I could control that, I would have a better chance, but um, you, know, you, you get these sharp positions, you, you just can't get to 10 seconds. And I even told myself that that's pretty much all I spent the last few days doing. But it's been a long, long-term problem. Um, just because, yeah, it's just the final game, first game, you know, Sam played well in this end game, although I was in time trouble, so already made a big mistake there. And then the second game, I was doing well, I, I think. But I had no time, and that's uh, I just don't know, don't know what I'm thinking about sometimes. Like I, I, I'm actually like, I don't, I don't feel really sad. I should be, but uh, it's been a really big issue for me recently. Um, this uh, time trouble. How do you think you can work on it? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I spent the last two days thinking about it. So usually you just tell yourself to play faster. Do you play so much uh, online bits? Do you feel like more practice over the board might help? I've been playing it over the board at least. That's why I went to Kazakhstan in December. So it's always good to have that practice. But I have that issue online as well. I have it's not it's a it's a overall problem because um, when I look at the chess I played this trip, it wasn't bad. But this is speed chess, and time is just as important as the position. Like. I had three good positions in my first match, and today, I don't know, I didn't have as good as a position, but in the final game, probably doing well towards the end. Um, but it's such a short format, um, there's no time to adjust until the match is over. But it is like, yeah, I would rather uh, play fast and uh, have bad positions than, than how this uh, finished. Eric, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts uh, with us, and we'll hand it back to the studio to Yvanka and Simon. So we have the winner of, of that match in the studio. Um, first of all, congratulations, Sam. Uh, thank you. How, how do you think that match went there? Uh, so I think the first game was really clean. Uh, I'm sure probably at some point he was holding the end game, but it's definitely difficult for Black, and I felt like I was just sort of like applying pressure the whole time, first with the extra space, then with the better structure, then with the king side play, and then. Uh, I prepared the Classical Sicilian for today, which I've also published on Chessable. I did a long repertoire, and I think I actually had the position all the way to Queen B5, like on move 25 or something on the online, but it's still uh, a bit chaotic in Blitz. Uh, if I had known that I was going to get white in game one, that I would win game one, I probably would have chosen something a bit more solid for uh, for the game, But because uh, I'm sure at some point I was probably lost, but in you know, Blitz, it's sort of everything. Swinging wild in a position like that with both kings open and nobody having a clean plan. So. Uh, 
Yeah, it was, it was interesting, but so, uh, yeah. So you came with a plan and you stuck to it. That was your philosophy. I did, yes. Uh, I considered after winning the first game, I had 20 seconds to think, do I want to play something else that I haven't prepared that's much more solid and much less likely to degenerate into something completely wild and ridiculous? And ultimately I chose no. I, I prepared this, I checked it before the game, I've published my repertoire online about it, and I followed it all the way to like move 25 or something. So uh, I stuck with the plan throughout. Yeah. And it works well. So yeah. congratulations. And uh, that must be a bit of a relief now that you're you're still in the competition and you're excited about the rest of the competition? Yeah, I think I've been showing pretty good preparation and good form here. I was very upset with myself after this match with Wesley where I had no problems at all with Black and then should have beaten him in 12 moves and instead lost in 15. Uh, so, you know, that was not great, but... Um, well, we can have a look at the brackets yeah. now, actually, so we can see uh, the situation at the moment. Okay. And, of course, you're going to be playing uh, the, the winner of the next match. And we have to ask this question. Okay. You don't have to answer, but it's yeah. nice you do. Who would you rather play, Ray or uh, Lanier? No, he's, no, it's he's playing uh, the loser of uh, Jose, or, Jose Andrew. or Andrew. Uh, I totally don't care. Uh, okay. They're both <laughs> very similar players, in my opinion. Very, very specialized for rapid and blitz. Uh, so you're looking at players whose like overall ratings and rankings in chess are much lower than mine, but they're real specialists in this format, so I'd be playing on their territory. I think against either one, I'd expect my odds to be around 50-50 in this format, and so uh, I don't have a strong preference. I will just show up and you know, try to play my best. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow you'll have a free day. Yeah. How do you intend to spend that day? Uh, well, actually, my father is visiting the tournament, so uh, he's, uh, he's been here for a few days, and tomorrow's his last day here, so you know, whatever he'd like, we'll, uh, we'll hang out, and then I guess he'll be playing from Friday onward uh, once he's on his way. Okay. Brilliant. Well, well, thank you, Sam. And um, uh, you know, as I think everyone will agree, that was a very exciting match. We yeah. didn't expect the classical Sicilian, but we should have, knowing your great preparation uh, uh, that you put in. I did publish a repertoire. Oh, I know. I know. I sh we should have known that, really. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, well done. And uh, that was that was a great result. Thank Congratulations. You. laughter at the end and we have to mention one of our partners as a technology and digital privacy company Kaspersky supports the secure advancement of chess in the digital space and its expansion into online tournaments it's the perfect combination of human excellence and strong technology and we are back now to well getting ready for our next exciting match and this is going to be between Ray Robson and Lanier Dominguez. These are two incredible players. Ray is the youngster, the very talented tactical uh, specialist, while Lanier is an ex-Blitz world champion. So I really think this is so hard to call this match. It is, it's certainly someone who is so tactically sharp against an elite player, you know, who's been at the world's best. And uh, take a look at some of those stats that Ray Robson has accumulated. He's three years puzzle battle in unbeaten king. He's also a member of the USA team in the 2020 Olympiad. He enjoys playing tennis. And we also found out yesterday from Fiona, he actually played ping pong against Ding Lorin. Fun fact. What's is he good at little tennis as well? <laughs> That's is. what I was wondering there. He's obviously good at big tennis. And here we have Lanier Dominguez. But OK, you can see he plays big tennis. He's a big boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let's have a look at Lanier anyway, and we'll move over to him. Lanier Lau lives in, well, in the St. Louis area of America, which is very famous uh, for its chess. And hopefully we'll be able to see the stats of Lanier Dominguez, and we can check out uh, some of his uh, bits and bobs. Um, and, well, you know, and there we go, we can bring him up now, 39 years old. He was a grandmaster very young at the age of 18. He's five-time Cuban champion, so he moved over to American. And there you can see it was 2008 when he became the uh, World Blitz champion, which is, of course, uh, an incredible, incredible achievement. And the countdown has started. 
The countdown has certainly begun, and these two have actually played each other quite a few times. And uh, Dominguez, of course, if we're going to think back to yesterday's games, you know, he actually had an incredible heart rate of uh, over 150. It went through the roof. Has he got the record so far, you think? I, I think he's got the record. No, Wesley So has the record. He got over 170. Wow. That was incredible. <laughs> and of course, Lenier Dominguez actually lost in a heart melting game against Andrew Tang when it went down to the final seconds. And there, the two players are in deep concentration. They are anticipating what is going to happen next. And we are coming close to 10 seconds to count down, Simon. The action is about to begin. It is, and uh, this is a really, again, it's a tense match because uh, I do feel a bit sorry for uh, for Dominguez losing that exciting Armageddon game. Uh, and remember, the loser now will, will be out of the competition. This is the last chance saloon. And we start with, well, it's probably the best named opening in the world. The English opening. I might be a little bit biased there, Yvanka. <laughs> and it's an opening that Simon has actually played all his life. And uh, there we can see Lenya also is a man with a plan. He just adopts his repertoire. He plays in what he believes in. And here it's just now become a very solid Queen's Gambit declined. And uh, Ray Robson has employed the exchange variation. And we're probably going to see the dark square bishop pop out to the g5 square and pin the knight. Yeah, very standard approach to the game here. And uh, I'm a bit surprised with the way that Ray's playing because we saw in the previous day when Dominguez was playing, Dominguez kind of favoured quite simple, solid positions with this pawn structure. And Ray has kind of allowed that to occur. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but I'm just surprised because he could have avoided exchanging pawns, keeping more tension in the position. And you see now that another pair of pieces have been exchanged. Surely this favours the player of the black pieces. He gets nearer a draw and he gets less problems to deal with at the start of the game. Surely, yeah, I agree with you there, Simon. And uh, well, Lenya, he is a man of principles. He has his opening repertoire. He abides by them. And I can say one thing about the white, sorry, the black position is that the light squared bishop has now developed to the f5 square. It's out. And normally. If you can do this with the black pieces, then you are feeling very smug with yourself because that bishop is usually saddled somewhere as a starting square. And uh, take a look at the heart rates. We can see that Lenia de Milingas actually started with about 120, so he took some time to calm himself down. He's now 91. And it's Ray Robson who has the higher heart rate. Yeah, so it seems like Dominguez is obviously a bit more relaxed than he was the other day, maybe getting used to the scenario, the pressure. Uh, you know that everyone's watching your game. You know if you make one mistake, you'll have us laughing at you and saying, oh dear, what an idiot. <laughs> Would we dare say that? No, we wouldn't, but it's, uh, it's a potential. Their timing, like we've mentioned also, it starts very slow when they have, uh, you know, just playing playing at like this very relaxed pace. And then it goes into hyper gear. We can remember Dominguez's Armageddon game from yesterday where he, he suddenly went into speedy, speed, speed mode, whatever that is. And still not much to report on the board. They're both playing very standard moves. Uh, it, it may be the last couple of moves have favored Ray. He's got all of his pieces developed, but Dominguez still has to develop that knight which is at home. You can't leave your pieces at home. They're like your troops in a battle. You need your troops to be playing a part. And uh, I agree with that there, Simon. White is a touch better, and the evaluation bar agrees with us and says, okay, black is still not out of the woods, primarily for the same reason that you mentioned. That knight on b8 is stuck at home, and whilst that knight is stuck at home, so is the rook on a8. And Lenier just playing very, principal chess you know he's moved his knight to the center he's now put the knight on the perfect square when you have this pawn structure put it on yeah very nice maneuver that actually because now uh Lanier can develop his other knight it's still quite a slow start here uh, we can see the moves on the wooden board there and we can see that Dominguez has moved that other knight there and uh, he's, it's, it, this is where you want your knights, but in the middle of the board. Knights belong in the middle because they control more squares and chess is all about territory, it's all about controlling squares and uh, again not much to report here, 
it's a slow start. This is what I love. It's like, you know, they just start so slowly and then they race at the end there because uh, they have to. There's no, there's no choice. Um, Ray, under a minute though, this is, could be a big factor. This could be a factor. I'm, I'm kind of predicting that, like you say, that a knight is probably, a white knight is probably going to jump into the middle of the board. We're going to see some pawns there on the right side start lifting. But in the meantime, actually, Ray has gone for an alternative plan, which is the minority attack, which is where those two pawns there on the left will start destabilizing, start chipping away at Black's four pawn majority on the queen side. Yeah, I think Black is very comfortable. Um, white will use those pawns. Okay, this is actually a modern idea that a lot of players are trying to use. And we saw this yesterday. I think Andrew Tang used this exact idea against Domingo. So if you've been paying attention and you've been watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe there. You'll be used to this idea of the white knight swinging to the edge, but to come back into the center. More exchanges occurring. Again, this is bringing us more to the end game, that part of the game, the latter part of the game. But that white knight now comes to this nice outpost there, uh, Yvanka, on, on this, this square. It's a beautiful night, I have to say. I mean, the only thing that Ray should be doing is actually just reinforcing the defense of the pawn that's under fire on b7 and just playing around this piece you, you really don't want to be playing knight takes knight and allowing white to cement the weakness on b7 the, the other thing that Dominguez has to be aware of is his king um, it's probably not a big problem but you do want to get your king to a bit more safety there and there you go i can read his mind <laughs> just call me nostradamus <laughs> I will do. And uh, 30 seconds for Ray and his heartbeat racing up to 125. I do wonder what is Black's plan of action? Is he just simply going to hold? Is he going to just park a knight onto C4 and then do what? He doesn't have so much time. Yes, that knight has come in now from Domingos, but is going to have to get quicker now. Ray is down to 22 seconds. Has he forgotten about his clock? He's got to play with a bit more passion here. He can't just keep shuffling those pieces around. The more he shuffles here, I mean, uh, well, you know, he's going to lose on time. It's as simple as that. The position seems fairly even. The knights are all just dancing, you know, little shadow boxing with each other in the center. Not too much to report in a big change to the position, but the big change is the clock. Okay, he is picking up the speed now, but it's now Domingos with 55 seconds and Ray down to, I think it's like nine seconds. This could be the deciding factor in this game. Yeah, it certainly could be. And hey, looky there, Simon. Look what uh, Lenny and Dominguez has done. He's advanced his G pawn, so he is threatening to start throwing pawns up the board and potentially attacking the white king. And that's why Ray was like feeling a bit uncomfortable. So he says, let's and trade queens. Yeah, Dominguez just moving forward slightly. I mean, this is still a fairly even position, but look at the clock. Come on, Ray, you've got to move. You've got four seconds left. Because it's so tightly contested on the board, it's who can move the quicker. They're both gaining space with their pawns there. That was a good move from Ray, making sure he doesn't get cramped, doesn't get suffocated on that side of the board. You need to keep your king with a little bit of air around it so it can move, so it can breathe. And this still looks fairly even to me, Ivanka, um, but it's the clock. It is the clock. And uh, it's really unclear who is actually going to try to win this. And wow, what a committal move from Lenia Dominguez. Moving the F pawn forward, giving up the E5 square. Oh, and he's lost the pawn. Oh. That is a big moment of the game there. Uh, uh, two pawns have gone down. This is really, really bad news for the white pieces. And another, and another pawn. one. They're dropping like flies. Oh, no. And did you see the clock time? He got down to one second. And you can see Ray shaking his head. It was a little bit of an insipid opening from Ray, and that is pu being punished for it. Remember, a win with the black pieces is double the amount, and this could be checkmate next move. It is it be. checkmate on the board? Checkmate on the board. That is our first checkmate. You know what we say to that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it, son. We have a win for Domingas against Ray Robson. Oof.
Yes. <laughs> it was Dramatic. just like just like you called it, you know, started off slowly and then it went into the hyperspeed melane and wow, what what a load of action there. Yeah, it was. I mean, it started, as you say, nice sort of manoeuvring around. And then right at the end there, the problem was that Ray's clock got so short time, you can't calculate the tactics as well. You can't see as much, you know, when you're being prodded like that and you're being prodded so much. But a very smooth performance by uh, uh, the near there. I mean, yeah. brilliant and, performance. And with the black pieces there, and here we can see when Lenier started making those aggressive intentions, pushing his G-pawn up the board, getting ready to attack the White King, and whoosh, the panic in both these players as they tick down to their seconds. Yeah, and uh, you know, it was a positional maneuvering game. This was another key point here, and this is maybe the main key point. Look at that black knight. The black knight puts pressure. Ray had to move a one second on his clock, and there goes the first pawn. If you take that knight, you lose your rook. And then goes a second pawn, two pawns down, and look at this, there goes a third pawn. <laughs> I mean, three pawns in three moves. That is far too many. I can just about count to three. Any more pawns drop, I, I start struggling. Mm -hmm. And the players don't have so much time to recover from that adrenaline packed end game. And uh, there we can see a repeat of that <laughs> critical moment. I haven't actually seen it before, like three pawns just dropping, dropping off. like flies in yeah. three moves. Oh, you yeah. see the despair in Ray's body language. And, I, and we rarely at this level actually see checkmate on the board. What normally happens is that one side loses on time or one side gives up because they can see the future. And this is a very nice checkmate. Look at that rook coming down, the other rook coming down. And this is, I think, our first checkmate. There it was on the board. Only 52 seconds until the next game, Ivanka. Can Ray bounce back? Well, he will have the black pieces, so it's a big ask. But, uh, and he's playing against an elite player. Linnea Dominguez is known to be oh so solid. I'm not so sure. I, I mean, I'm going to say no. Yeah, it's a real uphill challenge. Having black is to win with the black pieces is very tough. And in some ways, it helps uh, having black in the first game because if you do manage to win, as Dominguez did, you only need to draw with white. And that means when you control the game, you can sort of head it towards the draw much more easier uh, when, when you need to. 10, 15, well, about 10 seconds left until they kick off now. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see if Ray can, you know, put some pressure on Dominguez. Can we have an Armageddon today? I don't know. It's possible. They're off. Handshake. And we have our first move. And Lenny actually going back to his King's Pawn openings. And uh, Ray Robson, he has to go for it. And he does employ the Sicilian defense. That's right, keep an eye on the heart rate. And you can see that Ray's heart rate has uh, gone up quite drastically. It's one free thing has happened. He is going to play for the win. I think, yeah, Ray should be quite happy with the position he's got on the board with the black pieces. I mean, often, a lot of pieces can move off the board, they can get exchanged, the position gets a little bit, shall we say, dull even, uh, and then it becomes a draw. And in this case, that would mean he'd leave the uh, competition, but there's only been one pawn swapped off each. So that means there's a lot of tactics that can occur. This last move, the pawn pushing forwards, attacking that knight, pawns captured diagonally. So now Lanier has to do something with his knight there. You can see the knight in the middle under attack. Will he jump the knight to the right-hand side? You don't really want to go backwards. It's much more fun going forwards, isn't it? But it's, it's like life. Sometimes you have to go backwards to go forwards. You have to go backwards to go forwards. Yeah, no, but he's going forwards. Uh, backwards is not in the vocabulary of Lenier. He says, hey, my knight on f5 will thrive. And that is why Ray says, no, nope, can't be having that piece there. And kicks it back. Now, there's only really one square to put that knight, you know. Are we going to see him sacrifice? Are we going to see him counterattack? Nope. He retreats his knight to g3. I guess in the match situation, White could have maybe tried sacrificing that knight, but you know you, you don't need to take over risks here. You, don't, you shouldn't. You should just keep it under control. And uh, the position, a lot of play still left in the position here. Um, Black has got to get his king safe. Okay, he launches the pawn forwards. 
And is he gonna throw his black knight into the position now? Again, this is a similar situation. Raised knight under attack. You don't wanna move the knight backwards. You wanna go forwards, but you might get your knight killed. The knight might eventually get trapped. I mean, but he's got to take risks. He's, he's got to take he's risks. Take risks. I mean, he has to. You know, a draw is as good as a loss here. So go forward with the knight, take that risk. I mean, this is the kind of position where it's it's a cutthroat position. You mean, if and of he goes he went backwards? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I feel that this is very risky. He's playing it maybe perhaps slightly too safe because to the position totally the you. position demands active uh, activity. It demands. Peace, harmony, harmonization. I'll get my words out. And uh, a purpose. And now I'm expecting Lenya to kind of solidify on the right side and push the H pawn up the board. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in a must win situation, you've got to take more risk. And we see uh, Domingo's playing exactly the move that you mentioned there. And the Black Knight, this is, this is Ray's idea. He's maneuvering this knight around. We've mentioned this in previous days. The knights want outposts. An outpost is a square where it's very hard <laughs> for your opponent to attack that knight. And uh, talking about attacking Simon, I mean, that is a great move, good move from Lenya. He doesn't care about the result. He is playing in the most principled, most aggressive way. He's just simply saying, I'm going to accelerate everything whilst your king is in the middle. You have a bad pawn on d6. How are you going to get developed? Come on, Ray, take some risks. But both kings are still in the middle, so I, I'm trying to work out whose king is actually in, in more danger. I mean, we, we say that the black king's in danger, but black's king is going to castle. And because white has pushed his pawns on the right-hand side up the board, if his king goes that way, it's going to have a lot of air around it. Now, sometimes you do want air around your king, but other times you don't. And you don't want air around your king when there's lots of pieces on the board. So um, I still, uh, you know, this, if you would have said before the game, Ray, I will give you this position, I think Ray would have taken it because there's chances to win with black and that's what he needs to do. The time, we're getting the normal thing. They start so slow and then they go bonkers. So. <laughs> and talking about bonkers, take a look at Ray's heart rate, 146. Meanwhile, for Lenya, it is around the 111 mark. And this position is mad. I mean, I'm suspecting that Lenya just probably has to go wild. You know, he's he's kind of played in a very explosive way. Well, can he move the knight forwards? I mean, exactly. I'm, that's what I want. I'm like screaming, put that knight on f5, sacrifice he, oh, it. he's gone backwards. I mean, it's a, understandable going backwards, but you know, because you only need a draw and that plays against you. But the problem, I mean, whose king is safest? That's the one question you always ask in these scenarios. I would say the black king is safest because those pawns are very hard to break down in front of the black king but the white king he's got an open line towards it and um, it doesn't look very safe to me so ray great chances here to go to armageddon yeah uh, and anything can happen here and that's really all you can ask for and lenya is suddenly switching tack and saying i'm actually going to play the position in a in a positional way i'm actually going to plonk a knight on the c6 square and just let it sit there like a thorn in black side yeah, the heart rates have increased, as you've mentioned. Ray's quite high. He just shuffles his queen, uh, the queen lining up against the black king. And is okay, we see this idea. You mentioned Yvanka, the white knight is really blocking all the black's pieces and it's supported by the white pawn. The evaluation bar says this is about even, but I think this is going to be down to the clock again. Just keep an eye on the clock. 32 seconds left. The bishop retreats. Um, he's just got to play a move here. Uh, and white now, what does white do? Maybe get rid of that knight or something. The rook comes into the middle. Yeah, rook comes into the middle. This is good. I mean, moves that I would also be tempted by is actually try to trade off the dark square bishops, try to soften up the defense around the black king and raise heart rate going up to 151. Ooh. And we see that idea again. You're getting all the moves right. You're just, you're just class, Shivanka. Look at that. <laughs> the bishops are trying to be exchanged off. 18 seconds left for Ray at the moment. And um, yeah, it, it is. this has certainly improved for Domingos. He only needs a draw. Uh, and 19 seconds versus 28. The queen gives a check there on the diagonal. The black king has to move. It moves away. And now the white king just goes to a much safer square. I think the real problem here is the white knight. This knight is so strong. It's such a good piece for white. And Ray, only 10 seconds left on the board. And Lenier just 
moving his rooks. But I like what Ray is doing, you know, he's just going forward with his pawns, trying to soften up the white king. Still, anything can happen. Seven, six seconds for Ray. And at least that knight has now found a nice central square. This is an outpost. It can't be attacked by a white pawn. If you take it, you lose your rook or your queen because the pawn defends it. But, you know, that bishop is also strong. Uh, Black now opening the position up. I actually think Ray's got some decent chances now. He's managed to get his pieces to OK squares. But the real problem, I feel, is that white pawn. Uh, the white pawn very close to, to queening there. And a rook behind the pawn is a great strategy. The black rook tries to come in, trying to find a way around to the white king. And look at the time. Uh, uh, Dominguez is getting a bit nervous now. Um, 15 seconds left. A oh. lovely tactic. <laughs> nice one. That rook was impossible to capture because of a check. And Dominguez has dropped a pawn. Could we see a comeback? We certainly could. It's Six, now, I mean, it's it's five, a pawn up for black. Four, four three, three, two. Oh, he's oh. Just in the nick of time, but this is really changing a little bit in Ray's favour. The queen moving. Dominguez is looking a bit more day, a bit more Two, nervous. one. Ooh. One second left. They just got to move. He can't. Two, is he, is he one. Gonna, he's going to lose on time. time. He's lost on time again for the second time in a row. Well, I say in a row, he did that yesterday, Ivanka. He lost on time yesterday. Oh, my words. I mean, what, what a finish there. What, what a yeah. finish. What a finish. Ray managing to get back into the game, to come back from the brink. And that's it. He's even the, the score, and we are going to see an Armageddon. We are, and that's what the show is called. So we've got to get one a day, haven't we? We absolutely you know, do. The motorhead of chess. I love that quote. And you can see some of the highlights here. This is when the things started to get a bit better for Black because his rook now moves up. And you can see that rook, it swings all the way down to the bottom ball quite shortly. And uh, Dominguez, just in his way he's moving the pieces, is a little bit more nervous there. There's a little bit more hesitation. You've got to play with confidence, bang those moves out. Look at that rook, there we go, the big rook swing down to the bottom. And there was this beautiful move in a minute, wasn't there, Yvanka? I think it was coming up. Well, again, look at that, just too nervous. Beautiful move, that one. Yeah, such a tricky move. And you can see that Lenya did not see that move at all. But, uh, wow, it's exciting, isn't it? And this is the name of the game, Armageddon. It's what date. we want. It's what we want. We always want a bit of Armageddon. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so it's one all. Just to clarify what we mean by that, there is now a deciding game. Just the one game and it will be over with this game. But before we get to that moment, let's have a look actually how the game finished and we see, we'll just keep an eye on the clock. I mean, Dominguez, he, there you go, he, he got flagged. Make, he can't make up his mind, he's just panicking. Everything is gonna drop and there we see it. Ray scoring the equalizer and the players are getting ready 50 seconds until the beginning of play. Now, just to remind everyone of the rules of Armageddon, white will have five minutes on the clock, but needs to win. Black will start with four minutes, but gets draw odds. The players will not get any time added per move. So you might see a free for all. You might see like the mosh pit of chess. I love that quote. <laughs> it's gonna be a scramble towards the end. The clock is one of the most important factors here. I mean, with this uh, lovely Armageddon sign, I kind of expect Bruce Willis to jump out of it from the film there. You know, very, very beautiful. Here come the lights. 12 seconds to go, 10 seconds, nine seconds. And, you know, it's it's got to be really a bit psychologically hard for Lanier because he was doing very well in that game. A bit like yesterday, and he's lost. So I, I don't know, bouncing back's going to be hard. I'd even say that Andrew is the favourite, but Andrew has to win. Let's remember, White has to win this game, and Dominguez is very solid. He is very solid, and uh, he's employing the Berlin defence, something that actually Ray Robson is also a specialist in, and the knight coming down and attacking the bishop. The bishop goes all the way back. Both players incredibly well prepared. They know their stuff. And take a look at the heart rates again. Dominguez has got it down to 102, whilst Ray Robson, he's struggling to keep calm. He's on 131, and the, the players are just like 
blitzing out the moves. They really know their things. And now we've seen a whole load of pieces leave the board. Well, I mean, very interesting things have happened here. With the last move, we saw that Black has taken a pawn. So actually, Black is now one pawn up. And let's remember, if it goes to an ending when you're one pawn up, you're generally going to win because you've got one more extra chance to get a queen by getting that pawn to the the board. Has, I, I don't know this the theory of this, but is it possible that White has made a blunder? Well, I don't think so, because you can see that the knight now jumping right into the middle, White is trying to get lots of tactical chances. And let's remember, he has to win, so he has to take chances. And, he, and he's, this is a sacrifice, a standard sacrifice. That knight, though, this is the big move. It can't go backwards, surely, Ivanka. You have to find a good move for this knight. If you go backwards, well, I mean, why have you sacrificed the pawn? When you sacrifice the pawn, you've got to use the initiative. You definitely have to use initiative, and my guess is that the knight is actually going to spring forward. I mean, take a look at the black king. So bishop, this, sorry, Yvonne, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just thought this bishop c7 looks quite funny as well. Yeah, that's, that's what yeah. I was looking at. Also, the knight springing to c7. Just wanted to point out that the black king has three pawns in front of it, which makes it vulnerable to something that we call back rank mate. Yeah, and uh, it, it is a key moment now. What has Ray got up his sleeve? So I'm looking at that knight, sort of, or the bishop jumping forwards. Okay, he's gone for a check. The knight's gone in with a check, and the black king has just come along to threaten that knight. The knight now has to do something with its whereabouts. It looks a bit dangerous, the black here. It does look a bit dangerous. For instance, you can actually go knight takes bishop, and uh, once... Oh, so Le Lenier had it all in the bag. I was just assuming that he would recapture that knight, but he says, nope, that knight is absolutely trapped. Instead, he's going to reinforce the protection of the bishop on d4. I think that came as a surprise to Ray. This might all be what we call preparation. Sometimes at the start of the game, these players, they work with computers, they work preparing their game plan, and they kind of know the sequence of moves that they want because the speed that Dominguez is moving at, it could still be in his preparation. Okay, we see a check there, uh, and is, does that mean that White's gonna win a pawn back? Because on the next move, that queen could go forwards and take the pawn by the black rook. Well, white is in a must-win situation, so absolutely, I, re I expect that. But Ray thinking, and actually, in fact, Ray started with an extra minute on the clock, and now he has the same time as Lenia Dominguez. Yep. This is impractical. You can see on the wooden board there, the live wooden board they're playing on, the queen's got the pawn back, so at least now, white is not a pawn down. The queen has entered into black's position. This is very risky because your queen is the most powerful piece, but it's also your most precious piece. So how many times when you're playing as a kid do you throw your queen into your opponent's position and then your opponent just takes the queen and you're like, oh no, <laughs> and you start crying tears of pain. That's what chess is all about. Tears of joy and tears of pain. So uh, the clock times, uh, it's still even. They've got two and a half minutes each. No added time. Well, okay, the extra pawn did not last long. Lanier has gone, well, he's gone the pawn back up again. Um, and it's feeling still pretty equal chances, I it does would say. Feel, it does feel like there's equal chances. And remember, a draw is as good as a loss for Ray. So, I mean, he does have alternative moves. He can, for instance, throw in the bishop and capture the pawn. Uh, that is a possibility. But... The chances are, okay, and we see that move being played on the board, but the problem is the more pieces are, that are exchanged, the easier it is, the closer it gets for Lenier to get that much needed draw. A draw is enough to take him through to the next stage. Yeah, and it, you know, the pieces are coming off. Black has got a very solid structure here. We can see that the only difference really in this position is that white has a bishop and black has a knight. Because there are lots of open space, open lines, the bishop will be considered a bit stronger because it takes a lot longer for the knight to get to the one, you know, from one side of the board to the other. The bishop can go there straight away. These things don't seem like a lot, but at this level for these players, they could be the deciding factor. That knight has come back in the game though. There's no real weaknesses in black's position. So I think uh, Lanier should be pretty confident at the moment, the way things are going. He only needs a draw after all does only need the draw and uh, the queen does move itself to a better square.
queen is ready to hop over to the right if needed. And it's time for Lenio perhaps just to sit tight and instead he just jumps forward with his knight to the middle attacking the queen. Queen is going to move anywhere. Yeah, don't, don't forget <laughs> don't. about your queen. <laughs> One of the first rules if you want to improve at chess is don't just concentrate on your own moves. Have a look at what your opponent's doing as well. Look at his last move and ask yourself, what's he trying to do with that move? Don't be selfish in chess. Look at your opponent's moves. Yeah, and uh, I'm just very worried for Ray. You know, he's taking so long to come to each decision, to each move. Isn't and I'm just wondering, fork? isn't there a fork? Can't the knight plant itself on the D2 square? But I think there's some tricky business at work because the queen can actually drop back. Yeah, I mean, you can see the black knight. It could now move forwards, as Yvanka has very cleverly pointed out. Okay, he hasn't done that. He's given his king a bit more space. Uh, and this is also, you mentioned the king needs a bit of air sometimes, uh, and, and he's given himself that air there. And uh, the queen moving itself. I'm really concerned about the clock's time. The players are not getting extra seconds added per move. Ray has 54 seconds left on the clock, and that's it. He needs to start moving very quickly. Imagine if we had another finish no, like we did yeah. yesterday, where Dominguez loses with zero time against one second. I mean, that would be totally unheard of. We have the queens coming off now. The queens have been removed, so we're now into the end part of the game, the ending. And uh, it looks like black is very comfortable here with active pieces and more things that get exchanged the more closer to uh, that draw that Black needs. But I think it's gonna come down to the clock and actually Dominguez has a very nice time advantage. Ray only has, they're not getting extra time. Let's remember that. No extra oh. time. Oh, he's starting to do it. <laughs> he's starting to throw the pieces again. Oh no. And uh, we're gonna see the rooks capture those pawns and now he's gonna offer a trade of rooks. Dominguez, Ray says no. And the pawns are just, the players are just pushing those pieces around the only chance that ray has in order to win this game is just to flag dominguez it's dirty it's unpleasant but in armageddon anything goes oh uh, well i mean this position is by technical terms a complete draw here well i say complete draw they got to play on but it's going to come down to the clock who can move the quickest and at the moment dominguez is moving very very quickly they're literally just trying to win on time look at this they're repeating the position it's just down to the clock it's, it's remarkable oh, no. and there's another pawn exchange there oh the pieces are starting to fly off the board oh, careful moment. with where you put the rook okay dominguez oh, no. 17 seconds 11 seconds 10 seconds for ray this is just flagging at its finest pre-move oh dear it's chaos on the board and oh. uh, is he is Dominguez <laughs> gonna able to do it this time I really after yesterday I kind of want Dominguez to not lose this one and Ray's just moving and so quickly but he's got oh, one he's second, his one head. second that, that he's down on time oh. oh wow Dominguez goes through through the arm again and I'm happy about that after yesterday Oof. Oof. Oh, we all need a breath after the excitement there. And, and you can see that the, the, the thing is, when you get so short a time, you know, chess has been played on the board for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. The internet's only a, a, a modern thing. And these are the exciting finishes we used to get. We used to get this all the time. We still do. And, and it adds to the drama of the game. Of course, it might not be as smooth as other games, but it, it's exciting. Yeah. It's not elegant, let's play the, let's play the, but it's, it's brutal. It makes chess a gladiator sport. And to be honest, I'm down for that. And uh, wow, what an Armageddon game. That was a brilliant, brilliant finish to the game. And uh, well, at least Dominguez gets a little bit of revenge uh, for, for yesterday when he had that horrible finish. And we'll have a look at a couple of the highlights from the game now. Uh, and you can see here, I mean, the thing is, they, they, they really move so slowly at the start. I wonder if these guys should move a bit quicker earlier on. Uh, and that black knight now, it dives in to attack the rook. And we had that exchange of queens. Uh, and this was very good for black because black gets a little bit nearer to the draw he needed. And, and he just was able to stay up on the clock, wasn't he, Ivanka, in yeah. that one? So, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was good 
flood management. And here we see the time scramble. You know, this is just a dead draw. Let's be honest about that. The players are now just purely playing on the clock. And we can see the panic, actually, in Dominguez's moves. You know, you can see the way that he's not quite sure about himself. And you don't know whether they're going to make it in time. And there we have Rook against Rook. <laughs> you just see the rooks going flying here and uh, I, you know I, I remember myself when I was playing these blitz games with my friends it's always so exciting and of course there's a lot of money at stake but you know it, it's just hard to see where the pieces are and what's going on and at the end I think the fair, that was a fair result um, with uh, you know the loss of time to the player in a clearly drawn position so yeah so it was all, all good there so we're now going to have an interview uh, with the loser. Uh, to Incredibly start with. close match against uh, Ray. Commiserations. Um, unfortunately, you just lost the match against Lenier, which means that you're out. But it was so close. You struck back uh, in the second game, and then it went to Armageddon. Tell us just your first feelings after this match. Um, pretty disappointed. I mean, I was really surprised that I was able to win the second game. I think uh, I got a bit lucky there at the end. Um, but yeah, in the Armageddon, I just feel uh, I got a little bit confused in the opening. And then even still, I think I had some chances. Um, it was equal or maybe a little bit better for me. But I was a bit slow. And uh, yeah, I just didn't. Okay, I got to a time scramble, but he was always ahead a few seconds. so. Um, I guess he deserved to win the match. Had you seen um, yesterday's Armageddon time scramble and was that sort of on your mind while you were playing your game? Yeah, I did see that. That was <laughs> quite exciting. Um, I did think I would probably have some advantage if it was just some random scramble, but I guess with us both just having rooks and moving back and forth, <laughs> uh, didn't. Uh, I don't think I really gained any time at all. And. Uh, yeah, I would have felt a little bit strange if I made like 100 rook moves and just flagged him. So, um, yeah. I don't know. And just uh, tell me, what did you uh, make of the format? How did you enjoy playing here in Berlin? Uh, even though I've lost, it was still fun. I wish I could have gotten to play a little bit more. Uh, I feel like I didn't quite reach my you know peak level yet, but um, uh, hopefully there will be a next time for me. I'd love to play in the future. Well, we loved having you, Ray. Thank you so much. And uh, for now, back to the studio with uh, Ivanka and Simon. So, <laughs> I don't really know what to say. You're kind of getting used to these finishes. You're, you're an expert with no time on the clock. Yeah, I mean, I um, lost the second game just to make it a bit more exciting and uh, get to uh, Armageddon, which is uh, my favorite part so far. So yeah, but yeah, I hope I did a little bit better than than yesterday. Yeah, you did brilliantly there. Uh, I mean, yesterday was totally crazy. Uh, yeah, we were feeling for you today. So I'm not supposed to be biased, but I'm quite happy you 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 didn't lose that one. And, and you can see and here. And you can see here. Uh, <laughs> what was happening? This is our view, uh, and we can just about see the clock times. Yeah, I was trying not to blunder my rook uh, in time trouble because. I was afraid I would put the rook. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, luckily I had always like, uh, I think, uh, six, seven second advantage. And what, what was going through your mind? I mean, were you, was your heartbeat just no, racing? I mean, was it just? It's, uh, of course, uh, I think it's a bit better if you add like the increment for the Armageddon or move 60 or so. Uh, because you still get the excitement and, and the, the play, play fast and all that, but then you uh, say, I mean, you, you have some, uh, something to keep people sane at the end of the game and, yeah. and not to have this just purely playing on time, uh, this uh, we're, we're, Keenan we're, Rook versus Keenan Rook. But we're just trying to mess with you, you know, this is what I know, we're, trying right? to, we're, trying to, we're trying to make it <laughs> really like, you know, make you, you guys go insane basically, but um, yeah. I mean, it's very exciting anyway. This, yeah, this, this that's, for, that's for sure, yeah. And uh, yeah. looking ahead to the bracket and You'll be playing the loser between Wesley So and Renata Terry. Do you have any preferences? Uh, I mean, I guess um, it would be better to to play Renato. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes. but 
and and I never played him. I know he's a very good um, uh, blitz player, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's difficult to predict uh, any result here because obviously it's not only blitz but also very short matches. So mm. I think anything anything basically can happen, and I wouldn't be surprised if um, Ronaldo wins this match. So I'll I'll wait for for the loser, I okay. guess. And and do you have uh, any strategies? Because this is a very unusual tournament with a revolutionary new format. Have you come prepared with uh, any mindful techniques, any uh, certain openings? No, I think, I mean, I'll, at least I tried to just try to get myself in, in shape before the tournament. I was basically playing a lot of blitz and, and I think that's the only thing that matters. I mean, you have to be quick, you have to be calculating decently well and fast and, and if you do that then you have a chance. I think we were very impressed yesterday with the way you, you handled the, the chaos, you know, because I think a lot of people might have tipped the table over or something <laughs> or gone a bit crazy. So that was that was very gentleman-like. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it got a bit more dirty than, than one would like, but uh, it's it's a trade-off. I mean, you get you you, um, you get the system, it's very exciting, but when you play without the increment, you from time to time, you're, you're going to have that kind of situation. Yeah, but yeah. I hope. Can we call you the gentleman grandmaster now? Uh, Is that an after okay yesterday, thing? I'm not sure, but I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to make moves uh, on the board. But yeah, it was hard. It was hard. Yeah, yeah. great stuff. And uh, you know, thank you, uh, thank you so much. I mean, uh, it was uh, very, very exciting as always. And uh, we're going to have more excitement coming up. Uh, obviously. Tomorrow, uh, maybe more Armageddon with a gentleman grandmaster. Uh, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank for, you. For that. The official partner of the Armageddon Championship Series is IT.com, a domain registry like no other. It provides a platform for anyone to create innovative domains and effectively showcase their ideas. So go and check out IT.com and have a look if you want to start your domain. So uh, uh, yeah, good thing. And uh, well, what a day today, uh, Yuvanka. We got, we got Armageddon again. Um, uh, and with, of course, the gentleman grandmaster again. Um, so, are, are you happy he won that one? Yeah, I'm very happy he won that one. And, you know, he did play great chess. He came to the match incredibly well prepared. It does feel that overall he was the fairer winner. And uh, looking ahead to tomorrow's matchups, we see Wesley So is going to be paired against the dangerous, never to be underestimated Renato Terry. Whereas Jose Martinez will be playing against Bullet King Andrew Tang. He is the god of speed. Well, what a great day and thank you for joining us. It's been brilliant. I mean, I don't know if I'd be pushing tables over after losing, maybe. I don't think Yvanka would be, but we'd both like to say goodbye and thank you for watching until tomorrow. Bye.